in my opinion, the greater story is the Achilles tendon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So he ruptures his Achilles tendon right in front of the Warriors mm-hmm, bench. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're me, you know, anyone that's trained, you don't know for sure that that's it, but sure does kind of look like it, you know. And so you go out there, and the most telltale sign of an Achilles tendon rupture is when an athlete says, it felt like somebody kicked kicked me in the back of my leg. As soon as you hear that. You know it's torn. Yeah, you know it's Achilles, right? Which is what he said. And I I said, okay. And Then he says to me, so I reach back there and try to pull it back down. (laughs) Which... (laughs) <laughs> okay, that, I, that, that's that's gonna be a hell of a trick, though. I've had a though. bunch of athletes, you know, since the beginning of my career, rupture Achilles. No one's ever said that to me, <laughs> and I don't even know what he was thinking because it's not like it rolls up your leg, right? Okay, it's right. still there, right? I mean, there's other, th- you know. So I didn't, you know, I said, "Oh, it doesn't really work that way." He said, "He goes, yeah, I know." He goes, "You know, I've been, I've been trying to walk on my heel to see if I could run on my heel, see if I could play that way." So that it don't work that way either. He goes, well, can we go in the back and maybe you could tape it up? I could finish the game. I said, it doesn't work that way either. I said, but here's where I'll let you do. So you got fouled. So there's two free throws coming. If you don't shoot them, then Mark Jackson is going to pick somebody on our bench, the worst free mm-hmm. throw shooter, to come out and shoot these free throws. And we're trying to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So we're still trying to win the game. Right, right. I mean, feel for the kid, but we're still right. we still have a game, you know, playing. Okay. I said, I'll let you, you know, shoot the free throws. It's not gonna, it's gonna tear the other one standing right, there. I right, mean, he's right. already torn it. So right. I said, I'll let you shoot the free throws. I said, I'm gonna tell coach, I'm gonna tell Mark Jackson, I'm gonna tell the official. After the second free throw, make or miss, we're gonna foul, and then we'll get you out of the game. We'll bring you back, and we'll take another. I said, but it's up to you if you want to shoot. I'm shooting them. Okay. <laughs> what I didn't anticipate, because we were sort of at the scorer's table talking mm-hmm. about this, about halfway between both benches. Before I knew it, he was walking towards our bench, mm-hmm. towards you, mm-hmm. okay, to discuss whatever it is you guys were going to discuss in the huddle. Okay? Well, he didn't need to make that walk, but he did. Which means he had to walk all the way back. back yeah. Okay. So he's walking the, almost the length of the court, at least two thirds of the court, on a ruptured Achilles, then walking back to shoot the free throws. With no assistance then, either. Nobody none, helping him. None. Then walked all the way back to the training room. And I've talked to him to this day, pretty much, it was a shot at Paul Pierce. When he, oh, played when he walked Celtics off, yeah, and he, oh, was he will was he wheelchair off? Took a wheelchair off the court, and then came back, and right? Kicked our tails yeah, the yeah. rest of the game. Okay. So that was the message that he was sending to everybody in, in the league, and and it was sent yeah. loud and clear. Okay. Once we got into the training room, like if if you saw that he had no emotion. Yeah. Once he got in, then it all came. You let it out. I mean, there were Gatorade bottles flying. People were ducking. I mean, he tore the place up. Very emotional. Eventually, you know, he calmed down a little bit. We had a bunch of doctors in there and, you know, discussing what the steps were. And not too long after we arrived in that training room, he had already decided that he wanted surgery the next morning. To start his road back. Now you can't do that though, right? Well, I mean, you gotta, you gotta let we it. We did it, but most most doctors don't want to do that because there's a lot of bleeding yeah, going on in down. there. They want it to calm down a little bit, but he was adamant. I, you know, I want this done. Right? And he's a tough guy to argue. You know? Yeah, because yeah. he he would have went and found somebody. Right. <laughs> you know, he would have found somebody with a scalpel. Yeah. You know? Um. And then the end of that story is is that security brought Vanessa and the mm-hmm. girls 
So my office was in the back of the training room and it had an, a, a separate doorway that went into the hallway, mm -hmm. separate entrance. And I got word that Vanessa and the girls were back there and want to come in the training room. And so I went over to Kobe and I said, okay, look, Vanessa and the girls are here. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, because he was still right, still emotional, probably. All of a sudden, like, just like that, turned it off the emotions, and those girls walked in, and he was the rock of Gibraltar. Yeah. Okay. 